Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the thumbnail and the title, I'm doing something quite a bit different on my channel. I knew this year I wanted to do a video about the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2020, but I wasn't quite sure what exactly I wanted to do. A lot of booktubers that I follow, such as Kayla from Books and Lala and Jess from Peace Love Books, their channels will be linked probably down below. Um, they do a vlog every year where they read the top 10 books. Like for Jess's channel, she reads the top 10 books in the romance category for the Goodreads Choice Awards. And then this year, Kayla read the top 10 horror books, but she usually reads the top 10 thrillers. So at first I thought that I was going to film a reading vlog as well, but I wasn't quite sure sure what category or what genre to go with because I do read a few different genres pretty equally across the board. Um, so I thought instead I would actually discuss the top 10 books that are in each genre that I personally read and each category that I'm going to talk about today I have to have read at least two of the books that are up for the finals. Another big part of this video is that I'm going to make predictions as far as which book in each category I think is going to win and I will explain to you my reasons for saying which book. Uh, so I hope that this video is interesting for you guys. Like I said, it's something a little bit different on my channel, but I'm excited about filming this and discussing all of these books with you guys. Okay, so here is the Goodreads website. As you can see, here's all of the different genres. The genres that have check marks by them are genres that I did vote for. So I think I'm going to start with the best fiction, which is adult fiction. And the only two books that I've read in this category are My Dark Vanessa and Such a Fun Age. But I am aware of most of these other books. So first of all, I thought I would explain why I voted for My Dark Vanessa as opposed to Such a Fun Age. So My Dark Vanessa is probably one of my top 10 favorite books of the year. Also, sorry about the reflection from my glasses, but I need my glasses to be able to see my computer screen really well. And these have a blue light filter, so they help protect my eyes against the screen. And for those of you guys that may not know, My Dark Vanessa is just a stunning, stunning story about this girl Vanessa and how when she was 15 she was lured into a romantic, romantic relationship with her English teacher. And so there's two POVs. It's her when she was 15 and then her in present day. I think she's about like 27 in present day and how she's coming to terms with the fact that that relationship was toxic and abusive and kind of awful. And then Such a Fun Age is about our main character Amira and she babysits for this white family and the whole story starts because she goes to the grocery store with the little girl that she babysits and the security guard thinks that like she abducted this little girl because little girl's white and she's black and that's like the catalyst for this whole story but really it's a story all about performative allyship and things like that. So there were amazing discussions brought up about that topic. I did give it 4.5 stars I think because the ending for me wasn't quite as satisfying as I wanted it to be but at the same time I understand why Kylie Reed wrote it the way that she did. Now looking at these other books I know that there's controversy with American Dirt by Janine Cummins and I did look up an article from this is from The Atlantic because I wasn't quite sure what the big problem was with it. Um, here's the author of this article by the way. So basically I saw on Twitter that there was a controversy behind this book in the first place so that's why I looked up an article and so it says the asymmetry of Cummins identity she's white and not an immigrant and story a Mexican woman's flight to the United States with her son has led to charges of racial and cultural appropriation and publishing industry whitewashing that is very yikes and what's also yikes is that let's see um, it won a seven-figure advance and was optioned for a film adaptation amid broader industry buzz and it's an Oprah book club selection that's unreal to me that Oprah would pick this book because it is cultural appropriation. Um, and also the fact that it got a seven figure advance like that again plays into the whole whitewashing thing that is still a problem in the publishing industry. And this book by far, let's see, it has 194,986 ratings, way more ratings than any of these other books. So unfortunately, I think that this book is going to win. I'm going to predict American Dirt as the winner. Um, but when I was looking at this category at 
first I thought the Frederick Bachman would win. It only has 64,000 ish ratings, but because it's Frederick Bachman and I know that a lot of people love his books, I thought that maybe that was going to win. But as soon as I saw how many ratings this one has, I just knew that it was going to win, unfortunately. Um, some other books in this category that I really want to read Transcendent Kingdom by Yagyasi. I still need to read her debut, which I think is Homegoing. Oh, and then The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby DeRay. This one only has 34,000 ish views. So unfortunately, most of these other books I don't know much about, but I don't think that these are going to win like Big Summer or Dear Edward, Glass Hotel, even though this is the author of Station Eleven. So there is some viewership there. Um, and then The Midnight Library, I don't know anything about that. So the next category that I want to talk about is the mystery and thriller category. So I voted for Home Before Dark. This is another category that I've only read I've read two of the books, but I actually started a third book in this category and I DNF'd it. So let's briefly talk about Home Before Dark. I gave this one four stars. This is Riley Sager's latest release. And then When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, I gave this like three stars, unfortunately. Uh, the pacing was like a bit too slow for me the entire time. Like there were definitely some points where I was really bored, but at the same time, I see the value in this book. I do not think it's gonna win by any means though. I just don't think that Alyssa Cole has the following yet as a thriller writer because she primarily writes romances. This is her first thriller as far as I know. Then The Wives by Taryn Fisher. I've heard like really bad things about this, but it has like 90,000 ratings. I don't think that this one's necessarily going to win, but a lot of people that I follow gave this like one or two stars. So yikes. Um, then we have One by One by Ruth Ware. So Ruth Ware definitely has a following. She's definitely a very popular thriller author, but this book I want to say came out in like October, November. It just hasn't been out long enough to get the ratings because as you can see it only has about 30,000 ratings. Um, then The Guest List by Lucy Foley. So this one obviously has a ton of votes. This is the book that I actually started and I got 10% in and I realized that I just did not care about any of the characters at all. For those of you guys that don't know, this one is about this wedding that's happening on this like very isolated island and somebody gets murdered and so basically it's a murder mystery. We're trying to figure out who the murderer is and we're following at least five different POV. But I do think it's going to win because it has over 150,000 ratings and it was a book club pick for Reese Witherspoon's book club. So yeah. Um, then we have The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This one actually has quite a few ratings. It almost has like 50,000 considering I think this one only came out a couple months ago as well. But a lot of people loved The Broken Girls, which I think was her debut. So she definitely has some followers there. Um, but yeah, as far as my prediction, I definitely think The Guest List. But if not The Guest List, I think maybe Home Before Dark by Riley Sager simply because He's written, I think, at least four novels at this point, and he definitely has a lot of fans that read every single book that he writes. So the next category we're going to talk about is adult fantasy. So this is an interesting category. First of all, you can see I voted for House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. Is anybody surprised? No. I've definitely been getting more and more into adult fantasy in general, but yeah, I had to vote for Crescent City one of my top 10 books of the year for sure. And I just finished The House in the Cerulean Sea last night by TJ Klune. It only has 28,000 ratings. I definitely don't think it's going to win. Um, there's one book in particular that I know for sure is going to win and I would be shocked if it doesn't. But I gave this five stars and it's one of my favorite books of all time at this point. But personally, if I'm comparing Crescent City and The House in the Cerulean Sea, House of Earth and Blood definitely has a much more expansive world. It's an 800 page book. Like there's so much more going on in that book that I definitely don't regret voting for it. Um, I've also read Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This one has even less ratings, about 17,000. Um, this one, I can see why it made the top 10 because I know Naomi Novik has a lot of fans after like Spinning Silver. There's a couple of books of hers that are very, very popular. Um, and this is book one in the Scholomance series. I enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I think the world building was a bit clunky and was hard to understand at times, but I see the value in it. Then I of course have read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, gave that five stars. This one has about 50,000 ratings. I do not think this is going to win because once again, 
the fantasy world of this book just isn't quite as expansive as something like House of Earth and Blood or something like Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which speaking of that, this book was a little bit of a controversy because when the nominees were announced in October, this book had not come out yet. And Goodreads isn't supposed to nominate books that haven't come out yet. That's the whole point of the Goodreads Choice Awards. Basically, they go from November of the previous year to November of 2020, let's say. Um, and so at this point, I think, I think Rhythm of War... I think this came out in November, if I'm not mistaken. And then The Burning God, which was a nominee, it did not make the top 10, as you can see, but it was a nominee. That book also had not come out yet as the nominee list was published. This book only has 8,000 ratings, but it is Brandon Sanderson. I would be shocked if this book did not win. This is also book four in the Way of Kings series, which I, oh, the Stormlight Archive. Sorry, the Way of Kings is the first book. It's the Stormlight Archives. But this is a series that I know is so beloved in the fantasy community. So I would be shocked if this doesn't win, even though not many people have read it yet. I know people are very devoted fans of Brandon Sanderson, so they're gonna vote for his book anyway. So we have this N.K. Jemisin book this one looks really interesting. I've heard really good things about this author in general. Then we have The Ones and Future Witches. I am so planning on reading this soon because the premise sounds so cool. It's about these witches in the late 1800s and they end up using time travel to change the course of history. I don't know specifically what's going to happen or anything. Um, then we have Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. This only has 17,000 ratings, but this is a really loved book. You know, it has a 4.36 average rating. Then Empire of Gold. This one has, oh, Oh, it only has 11,000 ratings. I expected more because this is the last book in the De Devabad trilogy. I know a lot of people, especially on booktube, that love this trilogy. So that's interesting. And then Peace Talks by Jim Butcher. I, psh, I know nothing about this author. I know nothing about this book. Um, next is Best Romance. This is another category that I've read quite a few books in now that I'm looking at it. So I've read You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. This one I gave like 3.5 stars. Like it's definitely my least favorite of the ones that I've read. Um, this one, Boyfriend Material, I had an arc of, but I don't know. I just like, it doesn't sound that good to me. It kind of sounds like a red, white, and royal blue ripoff. So I just don't feel motivated to read it. Um, then we have one to watch. I gave this one four stars. Okay, so this is the problem with the romance category is that this book is definitely more for women's fiction. I can tell you right now, The Switch is definitely women's fiction and so is In Five Years. Um, the problem with this category as a whole is that Goodreads tends to nominate books that are not romance novels. There is definitely a huge difference between a romance novel and a women's fiction novel. Um, in a romance novel, the romance is the primary plot that is the most important thing in that book. In women's fiction, there might be a romance, but it's definitely more of an afterthought. It's definitely more of a side plot. So that's the main difference between the two. I think at this point, they should just have a separate women's fiction category. So one to watch, like I said, it's more women's fiction. I gave this one four stars. It's about a plus sized woman named B who ends up going on the show called Main Squeeze, which is basically The Bachelorette. Um, then we have Take a Hint Danny Brown. This is the one that I ended up voting for. Um, I think in every round, now that I'm talking about it, so far in this Goodreads Awards in general, each book that I voted for in the final round, I voted for in the semifinals and all of that. I definitely liked it a lot more than Get a Life, Chloe Brown. It's such a great romance because it also has really great representation. I think Zafir, who's the hero, he's Middle Eastern, and Danny Brown is Black, and they start like a fake dating relationship, and it's just a great friends to lovers romance. Then we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This one I need to read. And everyone that I follow that loves romance that has read this has given it five stars. It sounds absolutely amazing. I have physical copies on my shelf. Ugh, I just need to read it. And then Beach Read by Emily Henry. Um, first of all, this is the book that I think is going to win for sure. Out of all of the books on this list, this one has been the most hyped and has the most ratings because it has almost 100,000 ratings, which I think is awesome for a romance novel. I personally didn't love this. I gave it 3.5 stars. I personally 
couldn't really connect all that much with January and August, Augustus? Yes, that's their names. Um, and then these other books, no one is surprised that a Colleen Hoover book made it. This is Regretting You. Colleen Hoover, of course, has a lot of fans, but this just does not have nearly the amount of ratings as Beach Read. And I've also heard that this is not Colleen Hoover's best book by any means, but it's also not her worst. Like, it's just kind of like a middle ground book. In five years, this one, from what I have heard, has like almost zero romance. So this book should definitely not be in the best romance category. And then we have the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. I've heard pretty good things about this one. I might check this out actually in 2021. And The Switch by Beth O'Leary. This is another one that like, yes, the two main characters had romances, but the story is not about that. The story is about these two characters. It's about this woman and her grandmother and how they like switch lives. Um, so it's about that. It's not about the romance, you know? So yeah, so the romance category is a bit of a mess, but a lot of these categories are. All right, guys, we are at the best horror category and I have read quite a few books in this category. Well, not quite a few, but <laughs> more than two, more than, I count more than two books as quite a few. So I have read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I have read Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia and Mallory by Josh Mallerman. And all three of these books, I gave five stars. This was a really tough category for me to vote on because all three of these books I enjoyed so much. Also, I want to point out, as you can kind of see on here, I plan on reading The Only Good Indians really soon. Same with Plain Bad Heroines and same with The Year of the Witching. I'm so excited about all three of those books. As much as I really enjoyed Mallory, which is the sequel to Bird Box, um, I did kind of take it out of the running for me personally. But Mexican Gothic and Southern Book Club's Guide, they were pretty close in my mind for which one I enjoyed more. But when I really thought about it, Southern Book Club's Guide definitely took the top spot for me. This is such a cool vampire book because it takes place in like the 80s and 90s. It follows the Southern housewives and the take on vampires is also very different and unique in my opinion. And there were points where I was genuinely scared for the main character and for, you know, the major characters in general. I thought it was really, really well done. But Mexican Gothic was also really well done. This one to me was definitely more like slower paced. And to me, it wasn't as scary as Slaying Vampires was. Um, so that was kind of my thought process when voting for this category. But as you can see, we have a book by Stephen King. Let's see how many ratings. It only has 37,000 ratings, but like with Brandon Sanderson, Stephen King has such a following that given any year that he writes a book in, he's going to win the horror category, you know? So unfortunately that is my prediction, but all of these books I've heard really great things about. Like I said, Kayla from Books and Lala, she just did a reading vlog. I'll link that up in the cards above where she read all 10 of these books. And I've heard really interesting things about all of them. I'm actually, you can see, I wanna read Devolution by Max Brooks who wrote World War Z by the way. And then I also wanna read The Hollow Places. This one is definitely more of like a dark portal fantasy, but it sounds really interesting. Kayla gave it five stars. Tender as the Flesh. This one is like truly horrifying because it takes place in a dystopian universe where there's like this virus that made like all of the animals on the planet poisonous for humans to consume. So now humans have to consume other humans. And now there's this like really awful hierarchy that determines which humans get eaten by other humans. And that sounds truly terrifying. Um, I do remember that Kayla enjoyed this one and by enjoyed, she was totally grossed out by. If It Bleeds is going to be the winner. That is my prediction. And if not, If It Bleeds somehow, I think maybe Mexican Gothic because it has the most amount of ratings out of all of these books, but yeah, so that is the horror category. This category, I have read one, two, three, four, five. Oh, so this is actually the category that I've read the most from, which isn't surprising because I still read a lot of young adult in general. And a lot of these new releases this year sounded so exciting to me. So I had to read them. Felix Ever After and Clap When You Land, I gave both of those five stars. Inheritance Games, I gave four stars. That's just a fun mystery story. Tweet Cute, I gave four stars, I think. Majesty, I gave four stars. So for me, it was between Felix Ever After and Clap When You Land. 
And to be quite honest with you guys, the reason why I went with Felix Ever After is because Clap When You Land, as good as it was, like yes, I gave it five stars, it is not, in my opinion, Elizabeth Acevedo's best work. And Felix Ever After, to me, is such a beautiful story. So I think Clap When You Land is probably gonna win, and I think... If I'm not mistaken, the Poet X also won the year that Elizabeth Acevedo wrote that. So it wouldn't surprise me. Elizabeth Acevedo definitely has the following at this point. She's written three amazing or pretty amazing YA fiction books at this point. So definitely would not be surprised if that won. So yeah, Felix Ever After, as beautiful of a story as it is, it's about a trans boy. He's trying to figure out his identity and he goes to this art school over the summer and it's just yeah it's it's a really really great ya contemporary has amazing lgbtq plus representation cannot recommend it enough but clap when you land was also a very impactful story about these two half sisters who discover that they're half sisters because their father uh passes away in a plane crash essentially so yeah, yeah also, also i really, really want to read you should see me the crown i'm so, so excited, excited about that book all right so we have the best young adult fantasy and science fiction this is the last category that i'm going to talk about in this video as you can see i voted for the queen of nothing by holly black this is the third and final book in her air of the F no folk of the air i keep saying air of the folk it's folk of the air get it right <laughs> um this is the third book in that series whoo this has a ton of ratings 115 thousand ratings and i loved this final book i know so many people didn't i can understand why a lot of people thought it was too short too fast I personally kind of loved it for those reasons and I just thought it was an amazing conclusion to the series so I personally had to vote for it. There's a lot of heavy hitters in this category though um because we got Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. I enjoyed this book. I gave it like four stars I think. I enjoyed it. We've got The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Oh I think this might win because it is the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy. It definitely has the most ratings. It's got 169,000. Um, but I know a lot of people didn't love this book. Like I know most people that I follow gave this like three stars. I gave it three stars. Um, I did like a whole vlog and discussion about it. If you're interested, that'll be linked up in the cards above. Um, we also have Midnight Sun. It doesn't have as many ratings as Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but essentially you're pitting fans of the Twilight Saga against fans of the Hunger Games Saga. So which one has more fans essentially you know and which one has more fans that's going to vote in the goodreads choice awards i think it's between these two personally but oh no wait we're bringing in a third book okay i think the queen of nothing could win because i know that the wicked king won the year that it, it came out you know what i'm gonna say the queen of nothing i'm gonna say the queen of nothing it has over a hundred thousand ratings not as many as this book obviously but I just know so many people who adore this series and adore Holly Black, so I'm gonna say the queen of nothing. I know I keep flip-flopping. That is my final answer. Um, Legendborn, oh my god, I need to read this book. I need to. I'm so excited for this book. Um, then we have Starside by Brandon Sanderson. Um, this one is book two in the Skyward series, which I need to read that book as well. Oops. <laughs> um, but it just does not have, as, as much as people love Brandon Sanderson, I don't think that as many people love his YA books as they do his adult fantasy. Um, then we have Cemetery Boys, which I already said I really want to read that soon. Cinderella is Dead. This is another book that I need to read. I have had an e-arc on my Kindle since it came out in July. Like, what is wrong with me? Um, then we have Children of Virtue and Vengeance. This one I definitely don't think is going to win because as much as people loved Children of Blood and Bone, a lot of people that I follow did not like this sequel. Fable, I don't know anything about this book. I think it's about pirates. All right, guys, so that's all my predictions for the 2020 Goodreads Choice Awards. So basically how we're going to do this video, it's going to be in two parts. This was the first part, and the second part I'm going to film on December 8th 
when all of the winners are announced and I'm going to completely ignore Twitter, ignore Goodreads in general until I can film my reaction as to who the winners are. I'm really excited to see what books end up winning. So yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys on December 8th. Hey guys, so it's actually Monday night. It is just about 8.30, 8.25 right now. Um, and I just randomly opened my Goodreads app and the winners have already been announced. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start a screen recording on my phone. Okay, so here's my Goodreads app. As you can see, I'm going to go ahead and click on the winners and let's react to what's going on. Okay, view results. I'm excited for this. Okay, but, oh! We already have a surprise girl and I'm happy about this. Okay, so best fiction, this is best adult fiction, goes to the Midnight Library. And I'm so happy that this won with 72,828 votes. I'm just happy that American Dirt did not win. Let's see, somewhere out beyond the edge of the universe, there is a library that contains an infinite number of books, each one the story of another reality. One tells the story of your life as it is, along with another book for the other life you could have lit. What? That sounds so interesting. Oh my god, I need to add that to my uh, TBR. That sounds really interesting. Okay, so next category is mystery thriller. So let's see what the results are. The guest list, like I said, yay, I got one right so far. Um, this is the guest list by Lucy Foley. Definitely not surprised. I told you guys this was a Reese's book club pick. So I am so not surprised that this ended up winning. Let's go to adult fantasy. Let's see if I was right. <gasps> oh my God, I'm so, oh my God, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. House of Earth and Blood won. Oh my God, okay. The reason why I'm so excited is because for one thing, I know that Sarah J Mass in general, this was her first real foray into adult fantasy and her audience is mainly females, if we're being honest. I don't know a ton of males or men or anyone identifying as men that read her books, if I'm being honest. So I really thought it was gonna go to Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson because I know that both men and women uh, read his books and he just has so much of a following, especially because, like I said, that's book four in the Stormlight Archive. I'm gonna show that book now, Rhythm of War. Um, and I know that so many people love that series. I'm so excited. Oh my God, 95,084 votes. I'm so happy for Sarah J Mass. That's so cool. So with that being said, let's go to the romance category. Let's see. <gasps> Oh my God, I'm shocked. What? From Blood and Ash won. Oh my God, 70,896 votes. I'm talking about this because from what I understand, this series is indie published as far as I know. So that's amazing. I am actually planning on reading this next month and I am so, so pumped about that. I'm so happy for Jennifer L. Armentrout. Wow, I'm just like so tongue tied right now. I love how surprising these results have been. Um, yes, definitely, definitely need to read that. So let's go to the horror category. Let's see if Stephen King won. Oh, yay, Mexican Gothic. We love to see an author of color winning a category, am I right? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely well-deserved. I'm really not surprised. I think I told you guys that if it wasn't gonna be, if it bleeds, then Mexican Gothic was gonna take it. So I'm happy about that. Let's go to Young Adults Fiction was the next category that I had. So let's see what wins for that. Clap when you land, not surprised at all. I told you guys this was my prediction with 39,000 votes. I did check back on previous years for the Goodreads Choice Awards and it turns out that Elizabeth Acevedo has never won. I thought she won for The Poet X, but actually that year I think it was like Leah and the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. So I'm happy for um, Elizabeth Acevedo, even though I voted for Felix Ever After. So last but not least, we have young adult fantasy and science fiction. Yay! Oh my God, what did I tell you guys? The Queen of Nothing won. I'm so excited for Holly Black. That is so 
freaking cool. So that's going to be it for my discussion and reaction to the winners for the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2020. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching and I would love it if you would leave the sparkly heart emoji down in the comments below. I'll put a picture of it somewhere on the screen here. I would also love it if you would leave a comment down below if you want to discuss any of the books that were brought up in this video. And I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe and I thank you in advance if you do. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!